Let me quickly give you an update from Iran. There's a lot going on in Iran. So I I I Iran, there's a lot going on both economically and, uh, well, there's a lot going on in terms of protests. There's a lot going on in terms of um, the nuclear program. There's a lot going on in terms of uh, Israel and what Israel is trying to do there and I Israeli attacks on them. Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Again, we'll have to, we'll keep track of this. But um, it, it looks like over the last, um, over the last few days, uh, the number of protests has accelerated in Iran. So uh, January was a relatively quiet month and February is a relatively, early February is a relatively quiet month. But since the last few days in February, protests have increased dramatically. Um, in, on February 28th alone, there were 20 protests around the country um, and uh, demonstrations all over the place. Many of these demonstrations are now shifting focus away from the hijab two demonstrations centered on economic issues. Iran's economy is a disaster. Uh, you've got very high inflation. People, uh, people are struggling uh, economically. The real, the, the, the local currency, uh, has gone, uh, hit a record low on February 26. One, uh, 600,000 real was $1. 600,000 real was $1. Uh, Central Bank of Iran is trying to stabilize the currency, but this is very difficult because also the, the economy is, in, is, is, is basically in a, a, a mini depression um, and, and, and people are people upset. And, and, the, and the, the, the thing is that the government doesn't know what to do. The various center of powers keep blaming each other for the economic mayhem that is going on. Uh, you've got uh, ultimately the different ministers blaming each other, and then everybody blaming the uh, the the, um, the revolutionary guard, the Iranian revolutionary guard, which is which is in a sense owns many of the private, the big uh, government uh, enterprises in Iran. Although it looks like the the revolutionary guard is going to take over more responsibility for the economy, not less. But there's a lot of infighting. There is a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, angst. There's a lot more angst around the economy at the top levels of the Iranian regime than there is about the, the, the demonstrations of the hijab. They think they could control that, but the economy is only heading in one direction, and that is heading towards disaster. Uh, so um, we will see. Uh, we will see. Uh, we will see what happens. Uh, Khamenei, the, the supreme leader, uh, keep, uh, has, has designated a new person to, to run the economy as of January 30th. But again, these are, these are central planners um, and, um, and economic disaster is bound to inflict them even worse. Um, so you've got the, econ the economic disaster, a lot of protests around the economy. Uh, kind of added on to the protest around the hijab, and I think I think many of those protests are won. I'm also seeing stories out of Iran, and, and it's really hard to tell what exactly is going on, but these are very, very disturbing stories uh, coming out of Iran about chemical gas attacks uh, that the Iranian regime is uh, using against, in, in, against the, the kids, against, uh, against schools. So schools were demonstrating supposedly they are gassing the schools, not killing the students, but making them sick. Supposedly, there have been a number of students that have been hospitalized with all kinds of, um, with all kind of uh, basically poisoning. Uh, so the regime is, is trying to find a variety of different ways to uh, inflict pain on the people who are protesting, uh, on, the, uh, on, on the students that are protesting. Uh, this is, from what I understand, this is primarily happening in Tehran. There's some shocking videos of this and shocking videos of, of still continues of regime thugs beating up innocent people. Uh, a lot of that you can see at Twitter. I, I, I re, uh, retweet a lot of those. So if you go to my Twitter feed, you can see those videos. Truly horrific. And, and again, I will say this. I actually say this in all my talks now when I, when I talk about particularly with libertarians, I, say, I think one of the sh most shocking things that I'm experiencing right now is just the silence. The silence. You know, people who claim to care about liberty, turns out they don't really care about liberty. They don't seem to care one iota 
about liberty. They, they hate the American government. They, they track every little thing Biden does. They check every little, check every, everything that's happening around them. And, but they, they completely ignore, don't care about, about you know, people in other countries who are fighting for their freedom and fighting for their liberty and, and about a regime that is just crushing their people, devastating them and murdering them and killing them and, and, and doing horrific, horrific things. So. I, I actually am pleased by this development of now those who oppose the regime vis-a-vis -vis economic issues also joining the demonstrations. I think this expands the base of the demonstrations. It has the potential to accelerate the decline of the Iranian regime. I think the Iranians are panicking with regard to this. I think the Biden administration, I mean, this, is, this would be a, a, a devastating blow, blow for liberty is if the Biden administration comes to some kind of nuclear deal with the Iranians um, and, and, uh, and uh, does away with the sanctions, and does away with the sanctions. This would be, you know, truly horrific. This would uh, bail out the economy just when the economy becomes a, a real issue for, for people in the street and, uh, you know, would be a huge win for the Iranian regime. And long term, we'll do nothing to stop the Iranians from getting a nuclear weapon. I think the, uh, the Biden administration is moving in that direction. Uh, certainly, I think the Iranians are going to present a more flexible approach, flexible in quotes, to negotiating around the nuclear treaty because they want sanctions eliminated. They want a lifeline. They need money. They need trade. Um, and why do I think the, the, the Biden administration is likely to do this? Because... Uh, this week, I think yesterday, the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, who is the number three guy in the uh, Department of Defense, basically commented to the House of Representatives that now he believes that it would take 12 days for the Iranians to assemble enough uh, nuclear material, fissile, it's called, uh, for one nuclear bomb, 12 days. It used to be 12 months. Suddenly, it's 12 days. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the kind of stuff they do in order to panic all of us so that we support a deal, anything, but the Iranians getting a bomb. I, I would suspect that if Israel thought that the Iranians are 12 days away from being able to put together enough nuclear material to make a bomb, they would be a lot more active in Iran and you would see a lot more bombings and a lot more killings and a lot more disruption in Iran instigated by the Israelis. I suspect that this is the Biden administration trying to raise alarm as to prepare the ground for a deal with the Iranians. Because the idea was, one of the things he said is, when we had the deal under the Obama administration and, and during, until 2018, when Trump got us out of that deal, it, it, the, the Iranians were always 12 months away. They kept, the, it, it kept it at 12 months away. And since we got out of the deal in 2018, they have accelerated the production of uranium and, uh, and are now only 12 days. Uh, there has been uh, discoveries, uh, supposedly, that reinforce this of some nuclear material uh, in Iran that suggests that they are actively pursuing uh, the, the developing nuclear material for bomb. I don't think that comes as a surprise to anybody. Uh, but, but this new estimate of 12 days seems to me suspicious and seems to be to be scaremongering uh, towards uh, cutting a deal. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.